Great Wall Motor is back in the Philippines. And this time they're coming as Great Wall Philippines. Well, yeah. And they are launching three new cars today. So it's this one. The first one is the Haval Jolion. You can get this either as a hybrid or a regular ICE. And this is actually a compact car, but they're kind of putting it in the segment of the subcompact. The size-wise, it sits between the two segments. Also, they are also launching the Haval H6. This one will come purely as a hybrid electric vehicle. This car is slightly bigger. Now, once we got here to BRZ, Batangas Racing Circuit, they also surprised us with yet another vehicle, and that's their 4x4 pickup truck, the Canon. Yes, it is called the Canon. And now we get to get behind the wheel of the Haval H6. And one of its main selling points, aside from it being a hybrid, is the amount of power you get back here. So according to Great Wall or GWM, you get 240 horsepower and 530 newton meters of torque. Those are crazy power figures and torque figures, especially the torque figures for a car of its class. Now we're going to do the acceleration test. Three, two, one, let's go. So the pickup isn't as fast. It doesn't immediately hit you with the power. So we had a little bit of a hiccup there. There was a metal wire that caught on our tires, but now we get to do the handling test over this corner. I don't want to do it too fast because it still is a pretty heavy SUV. And they say that you don't have the batteries under the car. So while there is some sort of a weight feeling to it still being a hybrid, it doesn't really lower your center of gravity that much. Extra impressions after driving the Haval H6 and now that I was able to kind of collect myself. So power definitely doesn't feel like the advertised 530 newton meters of torque. It feels like it is a lot less, but that could be depending on the drive mode that we are in or we're not in because we didn't put it in sport mode. But for a heavy car such as that, the acceleration is still not bad overall. When we did that 0 to 80, then hard brake test, the brakes were also incredibly smooth. It's very comfortable. But what I really liked about the car is the way it rides. Because BRC or Batangas Racing Hill isn't exactly the most comfortable track to drive on, but it still was incredibly comfortable. So now we get to take the Great Wall Cannon on an off-road course. Currently driving in four high, so since this has full-time four-wheel drive, this is the normal mode that you will be driving in on regular roads. The Great Wall Cannon also comes with a side view camera letting you see like your front passenger side tire and it's particularly helpful when you're driving like off-road and also in situations with really narrow roads. So in a lot of off-road vehicles, you're gonna feel the body or the chassis flexing as you go over some weird side inclines and whatnot. But for this one, you barely hear anything and you can even still open the doors without any problem. And you can also close them up with ease. Now for a very fun part, what we always do with a lot of pickup trucks is water wading. So obviously this like puddle right here isn't too big, but yeah, it just goes to show that these cars right here have pretty decent water wading depth. We don't have the exact numbers yet. We don't have the figures yet, but as they come, we will be providing it to you. So part of pickup truck ownership is pretty bad NVH insulation, but surprisingly with the Great Wall Cannon, it feels more like a budget Ford Ranger. The engine is well subdued. The harshness is also well subdued. Even when I was sitting there at the back, it's not too harsh, it's not too bouncy. Everything in this car is so far, at first glance, pretty good. There's also a lot of pretty soft materials all around the car. Something that you wouldn't really expect unless you are getting something like a top trim Ford Ranger. Not bad overall. The steering is also configurable. You can have it in the lightest setting, a comfort mode or even a sports mode, which really tightens it up a lot. And you can change this on the fly depending on your driving conditions and preferences. Also, what's even more surprising is apparently this particular Canon that we are driving isn't even the top trim. So the top trim version of this car should supposedly have better off-road capabilities. It'll even have a rear locking differential. This one doesn't have that and it can still perform in situations such as these ones. I'm not too sure how it will perform in extreme, extreme off-roading because we don't have the experience nor the chance to experience those right now, but maybe in the future we get to try it out. So this is just the mid trim. Now let's talk about pricing. So the Jolion will start at 998,000 pesos. This is for the ICE version, but if you want a hybrid version, you can get that for 1,588,000 pesos and a couple more models in between. 
The H6 will start at 1,788,000 pesos and will top out at 1,883,000 pesos, both of which are hybrids. Now, for the pickup truck, this is quite interesting because you can get base model 4x2 for only 998,000 pesos, and I think that's a great price point to be in the sub 1 million peso mark for a pickup truck. And even the top model isn't too expensive at only 1,498,000 pesos.